What if King Kong was real? What would it look like? Can an ape really reach such a size? If so, what kind of adaptations would the ape body plan have to have in order to preserve the laws of physics? That's what I want to know, and that's what we're gonna find out. I think by now, most of you are aware that I'm a big fan of monster movies. What paleo nerd isn't? It's not a far leap from monster movies to dinosaur movies, which technically fall under the same category from Hollywood's lack of creativity to dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals themselves. Among the monster movies most aligned with topics of life of the past is King Kong. Every incarnation of Kong finds our titular primate living on some foreign island in the Pacific Ocean where life has remained unchanged since the time of the dinosaurs, the Mesozoic Era. The original 1933 film placed Kong on the fictitious Skull Island where dinosaurs and other prehistoric creatures remain in a lost world. The Lost World subgenre of science fiction did not originate with Kong. In fact, it's been around at least since the 1885 novel King Solomon's Mines by Sir H. Ryder Haggard. In this particular novel, the Lost World was one located in Africa, which involved a secluded group of folks undiscovered by Westerners nestled within a mysterious valley with loads of riches. Though no dinosaurs appear, it became the inspiration for many more fictitious yet believable tales of lost worlds, like Rudyard Kipling's The Man Who Would Be King, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's The Lost World, and Edgar Rice Burroughs' The Land That Time Forgot. When it comes to Kong's Skull Island, it was similar to that of the Lost World in remaining completely unchanged since the time of the dinosaurs. By that, I mean both contained dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals that are visually identical to the exact genera and species that went extinct hundreds of thousands to millions of years ago. The Lost World has Pterodactylus, Stegosaurus, Allosaurus, Iguanodon, Plesiosaurus, Glyptodon, Megalosaurus, and Forosrocos. Obviously, this isn't how evolution works. These creatures wouldn't remain identical to their fossilized remains after 66 million years of evolution or the competition between Mesozoic era animals and Cenozoic invaders. This occurs in King Kong with Tyrannosaurus, Brontosaurus, and Stegosaurus. However, it did break a tad from the trend with Kong himself, as well as a menagerie of made-up creatures living inside a cavernous canyon. The infamously cut spider pit scene shows us a large legless lizard, a giant spider and crab, as well as some sort of tentacled land cephalopod, all of which devour the expedition crew members Kong tossed down the canyon. Though not particularly realistic, the exercise in creating a speculative scenario in which organisms of the past survive and evolve past the time of their extinction in our timeline is what I want to zero in on. This exercise is common in science fiction and nearly universal for the Lost World genre. It now has the name of speculative fiction, or in the case of stuff like Dinosaurs and Kong, speculative evolution. It took the internet by storm from the early 2000s to the present with plenty of projects showing how dinosaurs may have evolved were they not to meet their end at the K-Pig mass extinction or perhaps what shapes and sizes the animals we live with now take after our extinction and tens of millions of years. This video isn't about the entire history of speculative evolution science fiction, but in order to do this exercise with Kong himself, we first need to understand how we got here. In his original incarnation, Kong's height varied from scene to scene due to the technical limitations of the time. We can get a good estimate of his height from his foes. He battles a Tyrannosaurus, and these dinosaurs stood at about 12 feet 3.6 meters. This particular Tyrannosaur was from the 1930s with an upright kangaroo stance, making it stand a good bit higher, so let's say 20 feet 6 meters. Kong stands just a tad shorter than the Tyrannosaurus, so something around 12 to 15 feet 3.6 to 4.5 meters. According to Screen Rant, a source I trust so little that the as far as I can throw him saying doesn't cut it, Kong is supposedly 18 feet 5.4 meters tall in the Skull Island portions of the film. He then grows to 24 feet 7 meters during his rampage across New York City. 
a life-size head, neck, and shoulders were used in the close-up scenes of Kong menacing people. If this bust was fully realized, it would make Kong 30 to 40 feet, 9 to 12 meters in height. Promotional material, on the other hand, has him at 50 feet, 15 meters. That's exceptional. But wait, there's more. Kong changes sizes between appearances too. The next film to bring our big monkey some lovin' slammed him against a giant radioactive sea monster, dinosaur, lizard, or whatever the hell he is this time. 1962 saw Toho work out a deal with Kong's rights owners, RKO, for a fire collab. Toho wanted to pit their money-making man in a dinosaur suit against Kong, but this time a man in a monkey suit. To complete this feat of upsizing, Toho grew Kong to 147 feet 44 meters. 1976 and 1986 saw Hollywood's attempt to retain the rights to King Kong with their continuously disappointing and uncreative King Kong and King Kong Returns. These films, which put a man in a suit for some reason, upped Kong's official height to 55 feet or 16 meters. Director known for the longest movies, Peter Jackson, then remade the original Kong in 2005 but stretched the damn thing to 3 hours and 21 minutes. This version of Kong aimed to make him and his world more realistic, leaning all the way into speculative evolution. This Kong is entirely CGI, so he never changes size from scene to scene. This Kong doesn't exceed 25 feet 7 meters and is therefore the most realistic aside from the Skull Island version of Kong from the 1933 original. Of course, I don't want to leave out the latest Kong incarnations. Legendary's Monster vs. Kong starts out at 104 feet 31 meters tall in 2017's Kong Skull Island and then somehow expands to 335 feet 102 meters in Godzilla vs. Kong and presumably Godzilla and Kong. All of Kong's enormous heights suggest even more enormous weights. To figure out what if Kong was real, we first need to figure out his weight. Then we need to explain what would happen to him with absolutely no alterations to his design. Then we can figure out how to fit Kong into our reality, the speculative evolution way. A big monkey. Since Kong is a fictional critter, a lot of the measurements and dimensions are gonna have to be super tentative and slightly subjective. I'm going off what makes the most sense based on other pieces of evidence. I'm going to base Kong's weight mainly off the critter he most resembles, the gorilla. The largest male gorillas weigh in as much as 500 pounds, 226 kilograms. They can stand as much as 5 foot 11 inches or 1.5 meters, though at this point that doesn't matter. According to Forbes, as well as University of London's Royal Veterinary College researcher John Hutchinson, the 2005 Peter Jackson incarnation of Kong at 25 feet tall would possibly weigh between 20 and 60 tons. This is easily one of the most realistic interpretations of Kong, having the great ape move on all fours similar to a real-life gorilla. Clearly that's not the only part of this Kong's biology influenced by Gorilla Gorilla. The smaller version of Kong seen in the first parts of the 1933 film would have the beast closer to that 20-ton estimate. And of course, the Super Ape versions of Kong from Godzilla vs. King Kong, Kong Skull Island, Godzilla vs. Kong, and Godzilla and Kong would have equally souped up weights. According to the nerds who have scoured the internet for information on these fictional beasts' dimensions, the Skull Island Kong weighs around 158 tons and then skyrockets to 50,000 tons in Godzilla vs. Kong. The Kong in the original Godzilla vs. King Kong weighs around 20,500 tons. Some of these weights don't match up terribly well though. And let's say hypothetically, for the sake of argument, that the weight and height of Kong scales up with the gorilla. It wouldn't, of course, because the real gorilla has a heavy paunchy torso and gut, as well as dummy thick buttocks. Uh, the real musculature of the gorilla is only preserved in the Peter Jackson Kong, so this version would be the only one in which I could literally divide the height of Kong by a gorilla and then multiply that by a gorilla's weight to estimate how much that Kong would weigh. The other Kongs are more humanoid and should therefore actually weigh less than a gorilla would be if upsized to their heights. 
A 25-foot Kong should weigh 2,540 pounds since a 25-foot Kong is 5.08 times bigger than a real gorilla. Therefore, 500 pounds gets upsized to 2,540 pounds, which is only a little over a ton. Toho's first Kong was 30 times the size of a gorilla, making it 15,000 pounds, or about 7.5 tons. This is only about as heavy as really big modern elephants, or an average Tyrannosaurus. Monster vs. Young Kong, at 6.19 times the size of a gorilla, weighs 3,095 pounds and then grows to 10,000 pounds or 5 tons. What happens to Big Monkey? Now that we have some super rough numbers for mass between the exaggerated weights made for the film universe and the toned down more realistic numbers I have for comparison's sake, we have a lot of problems here. Firstly is the structure of Kong, and secondly is his weight and mass. There's a reason that giant humans only reach 7 to 8 feet. They tend to live painful lives with many giant folks dying early. Our biology is really not meant to fit that kind of mega frame, and the same goes for the entire primate family tree. Despite this, there was once a giant ape at one point in Earth's past. Gigantopithecus is the largest known ape to ever live. The teeth and jawbones of a huge ape have been uncovered throughout southern China for a while now. These fragmentary pieces have been identified as belonging to some sort of primate, most likely closely related to the orangutans. Based on the size of the teeth and jaw fragments, researchers suggest Gigantopithecus could have reached anywhere from 9 to 12 feet, 2.7 to 3.6 meters tall. The upper end of this height is probably too outlandish and has since been dropped by most researchers. Unfortunately, the extremely fragmentary remains mean its true size is still a pretty big void. Ape-like animals can clearly only get about as big as Gigantopithecus. We can also assume that an ape that big and that closely related to the heavyset orangutans and gorillas means it probably had a big frame and huge bones to hold its heft without collapsing from its own weight. The same cannot be said of the human frame, as we are too upright and fragile to stretch beyond our natural variation. This would also be a problem Kong would have to face. The bipedal Kongs would probably break every bone in their body from their immense size. Though they shouldn't technically weigh more than the largest living land animals to ever live, it's their bones that wouldn't work. If they somehow did manage to work, the lifestyle of such a Kong would be a very slow one. A slow shuffle would be what these Kongs could manage. Jackson's Kong, on the other hand, fares much better. He can suspend his weight much better on four limbs rather than just two. No matter what benefit of the doubt I give these creatures, they wouldn't work for another reason. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not, you stupid bastard? The Square Cube Law. Square Cube Law The Square Cube Law is a mathematical principle that tries to describe the relationship between volume and surface area of an object as its size changes. This is applied to many fields of science, but here it's applied to living things. You see, an elephant cannot be mistaken for an upsized mouse. If an animal were isometrically scaled up by levels of magnitude, its relative muscular strength would decrease. The cross-sections of its muscles increase by the square of the scaling factor, or how many times you increase it. The mass of the animal, on the other hand, would increase by the cube of the scaling factor. Cardiovascular and respiratory functions would stop working the same way since small animals are adapted for being small and vice versa for big animals. The bones of an elephant are necessarily proportionately larger than those of a mouse. If you scaled up a mouse's thigh bone to be the same size as an elephant's, they still look wildly different when it comes to proportions. The elephant's thigh bone is way thicker and more pillar-like because it's adapted to hold up so much more weight. JBS Haldane wrote an allegory for this law in his 1928 essay on being the right size. Consider a man 60 feet high, giant pope and giant pagan in the illustrated Pilgrim's Progress. These monsters weigh 1,000 times as much as a normal human. Every square inch of a giant bone has to support 10 times the weight borne by a square inch of human bone. As the average human's thigh bone breaks under about 10 times the human weight, Pope and Pagan would have broken their thighs every time they took a step. 
This means that all the super simple baby math I did earlier is meaningless. You cannot simply multiply the weight of a gorilla by however many times bigger the Kong is. Mass disproportionately increases with an increase in size. This means all of the Kongs would be far heavier than a gorilla at the same size. I think this means we should take the reported weights of the Kongs at more of a face value. This means our Kong breaks the laws of physics and biology even though his recorded weight really isn't that much. The bones just aren't built to withstand 17 tons, let alone the monstrously large 50,000 tons of the MonsterVerse version. This is to say nothing of all the other physiological adaptations such an ape would need at that size. High blood pressure, big fat hearts, stretchy tendons, and more. These Kongs would break every bone in their bodies and then die from overheating and dehydration from the inside. Let's fix monkey. So, what would an ape look like if it evolutionarily adapted to these kinds of sizes? Thanks to the fossil record, we can get a good idea of what such a creature would look like. Dr. Mark Witten, pterosaur expert and paleoartist extraordinaire, illustrated his idea of what an ape adapted for being big would be like, and it's oddly calicothere like Now Kong must adapt. He cannot stand upright at all. This would collapse the legs into the torso. Bad news bears. This Kong stands atop four columnar limbs. The back limbs are the most rigid, with plantigrade feet that place all of their weight down on the whole foot, toes, foot, heel, and all. This spreads the weight more evenly. On the bottom of these feet are big, elastic, fatty pads of tissue that further cushion the bones from breaking. A similar structure is found in the feet of elephants and were likely present to some extent in the feet of sauropod dinosaurs. The forelimbs of this Kong are still longer than the hind limbs, but are more mobile. The critter still retains the knuckle-walking gait of the original ape ancestor, but taking to an extreme. The thumb is now all but vestigial as it hangs on as a spur. The front foot is now a rhino-like pad used to spread the weight of the beast. The body is now quite deep to make room for large fermenting guts to power the body. The neck has increased in length and heft to provide the animal with a greater reach and canvas for muscles. The skull is now much less primate and much more horse or rhino-like. I think Dr. Witten took a lot of inspiration from the giant hornless Indricothere rhinos. The skull shape is much better at foraging through the canopies for acceptable roughage. Witten has this version at about 100 feet, so it matches up with the young monster first Kong. But it would be much better at 25 feet tall, since that's about as tall as the largest known mammals have gotten, give or take. What do you think? I'm sure you have your opinions that differ from what science can prove about your favorite movie monsters. It's all good fun, yada yada. I just wanted to be a stupid nerd that ruins movies. Make sure you tear me to shreds in the comments section below. I'll be sure not to read it. Anyway, what do you think about the real King Kong? Waiting to see the really real King Kong? Well, that may come soon enough. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.